This video will discuss how to compute ensemble or average properties for molecular simulations. Okay, so we've discussed in the previous few videos energy minimization or geometry optimization, and that's a procedure which gets us a very low energy structure of our molecule. We get a set of XYZ coordinates at which we have a local minimum in energy, and that seems important because we know that we have this intuitive idea that low energy structures are important for the properties of systems. So that high energy structures are less important and low energy structures are kind of more important for determining the properties of our system. But they're not all we need. So instead of just getting the set of low energy structures of, of just our optimized structures, what we need to do is average our properties over the contributions of all structures. So let's imagine we have some physical property here, A. A might be the energy, A might be some type of bond length, A might be the pressure or temperature of the system, whatever it is, it's just some physical property of our system. And let's say we wanna compute what we call the expectation value of the system or the average value or the mean value so that would be represented by either like these brackets here, a notation you see a lot in quantum mechanics, or maybe this uh, bar here, which you might see more in statistical mechanics or thermodynamics. So this would be equal to a sum over all of our states of the probability of being in that state times the value of property I in our, of property A in state I. So this is what we would call a discrete sum. So this is assuming we have some finite set of states which we can compute uh, probabilities for, uh, the value of these properties for, and then we can just sum and average over all these states. So we can we have fairly intuitive grasp on how we might get these properties. Like we know what we know from our discussions of energy functions in the previous few chapters on uh, how we could compute the energy or how we could compute a bond length or bond angle, any kind of property like that of our system when we know what the XYZ coordinates are in the given state. But what about these probabilities? So if we remind ourselves from statistical mechanics, or if you've never seen statistical mechanics, I encourage you to look at my uh, chapter on that in the thermodynamics course. We know that the probability that the system is going to be in a given state is approximately proportional to what's called the Boltzmann factor of that state, where we take e to the negative energy of the state divided by Boltzmann constant times temperature. So at very low energies, this value is quite large and we get a high probability. So low energy states are favored, but higher energy states aren't, don't have zero probability. They just have an exponentially decreasing probability as the energy goes up. The lower the temperature is, the more we favor low energy states. The higher the temperature is, the more low energy and high energy states are uh, not biased towards one or the other. Okay, so we can get what is called the partition function of the system. If we remind ourselves again, Q, which is a sum of the Boltzmann factors of every one of our states. So in uh, in the continuous sense, that would be a sum over the Boltzmann factor of every distinct state. Or sorry, in the discrete sense, it would be this. In the continuous sense, if we don't have a set of discrete states, but we have a continuously changing per, uh, variables of our system, like our XYZ coordinates, which can change by any value, we'd have an integral over all of our coordinates of the Boltzmann factor uh, as a function of those coordinates. So states which have low bolt states with have which have low energies have have large Boltzmann factors and have high preference. States which have higher energies contribute less to over less to the overall properties, but they do have some contribution. Okay, so the probability of those states is going to be one over partition function times their Boltzmann factor. We're normalizing these probabilities so that they add up to one. So the average value or our expectation value of those properties is the integral over all space, if this is a continuous sum, one over Q times Boltzmann factor times the value of the property at that particular configuration. And then this Q, as I mentioned, in continuous space is this kind of integral. 
So overall, what we get is called a Boltzmann weighted average of this property A, whether that's energy or any other kind of physical property. So we have an integral in our numerator, which is the integral of the property value times Boltzmann factor, and an integral in the denominator, which normalizes that, which is the integral of all of our Boltzmann factors or our partition function. So if we have the partition function in statistical mechanics, that's like the wave function in quantum mechanics. It tells us everything we can know about the system. So any physical property that you can learn about a system is, is carried inside the partition function. So this is just one way of getting at it. You could use any of the other kinds of tricks you learned from statistical mechanics. So in principle, what we would want to do is we'd want what's called an analytic integration of this integral. So we, we just want to do what we do anytime we see an integral is try to integrate it and get the exact result as a function of all of our input variables and parameters. So that kind of analytic integration, in general, these are going to be, you know, 3n xyz coordinates in our system, 3 for, for each atom and n atoms. So in general, that's going to be a high dimensional function. That's going to be an extremely difficult integral to do. What's much more common is to do what's called numerical or approximate integration. And there are various ways to do that. And that's what the rest of the chapter is dedicated to. So we could integrate them on a grid, we, you know, choose a set of points to represent each of the dimensions. And then we could turn this into a sum and just average over the sum uh, over all of our grid points. But if you have anything more than a few dimensions, uh, then the number of points starts increasing exponentially. Let's say we need to include uh, 10 points in every dimension. And let's say that we have, uh, you know, 300 atoms. So 10 points per dimension, 300 atoms, that's 900 coordinates. That would be 10 to the 900 points that we need to sum. So obviously that gets infeasible very, very quickly. Grids naively scale exponentially. They're exponentially difficult to compute for larger uh, grids. So that's usually not a productive strategy. Alternatively, we could use one of two strategies, which is used all the time in computational chemistry. Number one would be what you call a time average. That'd be using what we call molecular dynamics. So there's a property in statistical mechanics that we could that says that whether we do an integral over all of configuration space, you know, in doing this type of Boltzmann integral, or whether we average a property by simulating a system for a very long time, those two should have in the limit of an infinite amount of time and some other approximations. In the limit of a large simulation, these two should be equal to one another. So we can use what's called molecular dynamics, get a bunch of trajectories of our molecules over time, get the average that way, and then that's a discrete average we can do. Or we might use what's called a random average using a method called Monte Carlo, where we kind of randomly displace our system and then using some clever algorithms, hopefully that random uh, average samples enough of our configuration space here, samples enough of the important regions that we get a pretty good approximation to whatever this property is. So that's what the rest of the chapter is dedicated to, is these more advanced methods for trying to approximate uh, ways of getting what these very complicated expectation value integrals are for various molecular systems to gain insight into the properties of those systems from simulation.